those black flies, the little black flies. Always a black fly, no matter where you go. I'll die with the black fly picking my bones. In North Ontario, I -O, in North Ontario. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, this is a video about death and books. Now, those are two potentially very heavy words for some of you, so this is your chance to just nope out. Go play with a puppy, stare wistfully out the window, have a burrito, self-care it up, do whatever you have to do. <laughs> but for those of you who are still here, let's talk about forensic entomology. Now, this is a field that combines two amazing things. Everybody loves forensics, right? Or at least the idea of forensics, as typically presented by photogenic and possibly morally ambiguous protagonists who always seem to do lab work to a rousing garage rock soundtrack. But forensic entomology is the application of insect science to both criminal and civil investigations. Now, if you're wondering what kind of monster might name a butterfly in a civil suit, just think back to the last time you had a deadbeat landlord who thought that roaches gave your studio apartment character. You can talk. Talk? We can sing! <laughs> or, alternatively, imagine the checks that General Mills might write if you found a handful of fresh pay in your cinnamon toast crunch. But for now, we're going to focus on the medical legal end of things, and it's not new. The earliest recorded instance of using bogs to solve a murder is actually recounted in a 13th century Chinese handbook for coroners titled The Washing Away of Wrongs, which is an amazing title. In it, the author recounts a village murder that had been committed with a sickle, a farming tool possessed by basically every family in town. So the local magistrate invited all of the men to assemble on a hot summer's day, sickles in hand, and then watched as blowflies landed on the one blade still tinged with traces of blood. <laughs> right? That's, that's amazing. Incidentally, the man who wrote this book, Sung Chi, was the subject of a 44-episode series that aired in Hong Kong in 1999, eight months before the debut of CSI, and which has, for my money, the superior title song. By contrast, Europe didn't really even begin to catch up until the 17th century when Italian physician Francesco Redi challenged the then current theory of spontaneous generation, the theory that maggots just kind of appeared, more or less by magic, from rotting meat. And after a few more centuries, scientists had hit upon the idea that different kinds of insects arrived at bodies in a predictable sequence, like workers clocking in and out of their shifts for the putrefaction factory. That isn't to say that forensic entomologists determined the time of death. Because that would be kind of presumptuous, yeah? Blowflies are basically bloodhounds with wings, but they can't just teleport to the cadaver buffet as soon as it opens. Also, remember, insects can be a lot like us, in that they move a lot slower in winter. So what's the deal now? Gary says triple homicide? Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Two of them are over here. Where is everybody? Well, it's cold, Margie. They are, however, nothing if not reliable. So if you can collect data on, among other things, the ambient temperature of the crime scene, the species of whatever flies you find, the stage of development of the fly babies from larva to first, second, third stage instar to pupae, and plot that into some appropriately impressive math, you can more or less run the numbers backwards to determine just how long a particular body has been a neonatal ward for creepy crawlies. And not only do you have a United Nations of flies, of course, who are almost always first on scene, You've also got beetles, who break down the body even further, but you can also get moths, or dragonflies, or ants, some of whom just show up to eat the maggots that are eating the body. You can also, for example, determine that the body has been moved because insects have ranges, and some of them may just be on an accidental road trip. Wow! City!
On top of all of this, meanwhile, is a reality that forensics is just a stew of unpredictable human tragedy. In reality, bodies are stuffed in suitcases or washed up on riverbanks, and all of these variables do their absolute best to wreak havoc on whatever equations you throw at them. And as much as I might like to illustrate this point with real-life case studies, I'm not going to, because we are still talking about real people who died. And they deserve more respect and dignity than I believe this particular format of wisecracking nerdy enthusiasm can possibly provide them. Although, I will say I was once in a case study lecture titled Maggots on Coke, and it was amazing. In conclusion, well, I'd like to leave you with these three things. One, I'd like to thank Denise Tamarolo, my instructor at the Forensic Entomology Workshop that I attended in 2017, and which she very often taught while wearing a Game of Thrones t-shirt that read, I choose violence. She taught this course for years every summer at the New Jersey School of Conservation, a school which, due to a perfect storm of state budget shortfalls, expiration of university management contracts, and oh yes, a pandemic, is currently at risk of closing forever as of September 1st, 2020. So I would be remiss to credit her without also pointing you to the Friends of the New Jersey School of Conservation, where you can learn more. Two, I think it is incumbent upon all of us to recognize that forensics, as fascinating as it may be, did not evolve in a vacuum of bias-free scientific inquiry. Rather, forensics historically developed as a tool of police investigation and worked in service of institutions that demanded punitive retribution and incarceration. So, if forensics is your jam, gold speed, but I would thank you for directing your nerdy fervor toward dismantling these injustices instead of perpetuating them. And three, formally thank y'all for so patiently enduring this, my first ever attempt at a SciCom video. I have no idea what I'm doing. I literally found out about this conference on Friday, and I made this film by Monday, so please forgive me my trespasses here today. But here's hoping that this face, these jazz hands, and this frenetic iMovie editing have not entirely bored you to tears, so thank you, wash your hands, wear your masks, and take care of one another. <laughs>